Does anyone have the mark of the beast today? How will it be enforced? Why would the majority of the world receive it? Will you be among one of those marked or sealed? Will the new mandatory laws lead to the mark of the beast? Welcome to Truth in Bible Prophecy. This video is focused on Revelation 13 and how we can avoid the mark and be victorious in Jesus at end time. Kindly subscribe and like and share this video to all. Thank you friends for supporting this ministry. Be blessed by God's word as I present to you the mark of the beast, Satan's final attack. the time of the end satan is furious against those who have remained faithful to christ revelation 13 describes him preparing for the final attack against christ's faithful followers in association with two allies the sea beast and the earth beast god reveals to us what will happen at the time of the end so we will not be surprised and we will be prepared jesus warns his followers now i have told you before it happens so that when it happens you may believe john 14 29 therefore it is important to be careful not to speculate beyond what the prophecy has revealed the full understanding of the end time prophecies will be ultimately possible at the time of their fulfillment not before keep in mind that the purpose of revelations prophecies is not to satisfy our curiosity about the future but to move us to readiness knowing Satan's end time strategy will help us not to fall into the snare of his deception throughout history Satan has been attacking the church by means of persecuting force and coercion but as he begins his final attack against the end time remnant his strategy changes from coercion to deception this shift in satan's strategy corresponds to the transition from the historical to the eschatological focus of the book of revelation in endeavoring to win the allegiance of the world satan will launch a great counterfeit of the true god and his salvific activities in the world in revelation 13 a triune league is formed between the dragon and his two allies the beast from the sea revelation 13 1 to 10 and the beast from the earth revelation 13 11 to 18 they form a diabolic triumvirate as an antithesis to the trinity of the godhead the father the son and the holy spirit the dragon is the leader who delegates duties to the other two members of the triad revelation portrays him as the counterfeit of god the father and his work god the father god's dwelling place is in heaven while the dragon's dwelling place was once in heaven god has a throne while the dragon has also a throne god is worshiped while the dragon also wants to be worshiped god lives and reigns forever the dragon is destroyed forever at the time of the end satan will seek to take god's place in the world and be worshiped just as he did at the beginning of his rebellion isaiah 14 verse 14 i will be like the most high during that time god urges the earth's inhabitants to worship him the one who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters revelation 14 verse 7 counterfeit ceiling while god at the time of the end seals his worshipers on their forehead with his name satan and his allies mark their worshipers on their foreheads or their right hand with the beast's name revelation 13 16 to 17 the mark of the beast is thus the antithesis of god's seal counterfeit three angels messages 
during those times, God sends to the world's inhabitants the three angels' messages with the everlasting gospel. Revelation 14, 6-13 In opposing God, the unholy triumvirate sends to the world three demonic spirits with a false gospel. You can read that in Revelation 16, 13 to 14, the three satanic frogs. These three demonic angels are the antithesis of the three angels' messages. The counterfeit city. God offers to the world's inhabitants the holy city, New Jerusalem, as his answer and solution to all human longings and hopes for ideal life. Satan with his associates offer to the world the city of Babylon, based on economical prosperity, power success, and sensual gratification. Babylon in Revelation is thus the antithesis of the New Jerusalem. While the dragon is on the seashore, a monstrous beast come out of the sea. In the Bible, the beast is a symbol of a political power. While the sea symbolizes stormy social and political conditions out of which evil powers come to attack God's people. Here is an enthronement scene that copies the enthronement of Christ in Revelation 5, just as the Father has given His throne and authority to Christ. So the dragon gives his throne and authority to the beast, investing him as his co-regent and representative on earth. This affirms what was stated before, that this symbolic sea beast is the second member of the false trinity. The image of the beast can be read. In Revelation 13, 14 to 15, the healing of the sea beast's deadly wound would take place when the medieval religious system is restored. The prophecy shows that the earth beast will play the key role in the process. John goes on to explain how will this happen. Through miraculous signs, the earth beast deceives the people of the world. The people will accept these deceptive miracles as the manifestation of divine power primarily because of the beast's lamb-like appearance. The true nature of the beast is displayed in its dragon-like talk. The beast will persuade the people of the world to make an image of the beast that received the deadly wound. An image is a copy of some reality. The prophecy shows that the world powers will be seduced to create a system of state religion resembling the one from the Middle Ages. When the civil and political powers join the leading religious organizations to enforce a religion upon people, they will form the image of the beast. However, as the Old Testament shows, images lack life. Psalm 135, 15 to 17. So here the earth beast plays a decisive role. It gives breath to the image of the beast, making it alive. This portrayal of breathing life into the image recounts Genesis 2 verse 7, where having created man in his image, God bred life into him, enabling him to function. Likewise, the earth beast gives life to the sea beast's image, enabling him to function by using deceptive miracles and political power to enforce its demands for popular worship. Revelation 13 indicates here that the Protestant United States will have the leading role in leading the sea beast's deadly wound. It tells us that the religio-political system that Satan used during the Middle Ages will rise again in the closing days of this earth's history to win and control the worship and conscience of the world's people. This prophecy points to the revival of medieval intolerance at the time of the end. The lamb-like beast will side with the sea beast to establish a religious union and enforce an institution that characterized medieval Christianity in both Western Europe and Eastern Hemisphere. The earth beast's impact will be worldwide. Those who succumb to the pressure applied by this institution will receive a mark with the beast's name on their hand or their forehead. Revelation 13 verse 16. All classes of human society are commanded to receive the mark of the beast. To receive the mark of the beast means to belong to the beast and worship it. 
The mark of the beast is thus an antithesis of God's seal. Revelation 14 verse 1 Just as the seal identifies those who belong to God, so the mark of the beast identifies those who belong to and worship the beast. While the sealing signifies the Holy Spirit's working in human hearts. You can read that in Ephesians 1 verse 13 to 14. The mark of the beast counterfeits the work of the Holy Spirit. The people with the mark of the beast have been brought into this religious system and they ever serve it with their minds and hearts, some willingly, others reluctantly. Placing the mark on the right hand or forehead invokes Deuteronomy 6 verse 8, where Moses instructed the Israelites to bind God's law as a sign upon their hands or their forehead. The injunction that Jews have taken literally by wearing phylacteries to show their belonging and obedience to God. Revelation shows that the first four commandments of the Decalogue, the ones that concern a person's relationship with God and worship, will become the standard of loyalty to God in the final crisis. Satan's end time activities are portrayed in the book as well, a well-planned attack on these four commandments. The Sabbath in the Bible concerns proper worship and relationship with God. As the Sabbath is the distinctive sign of God's faithful people's obedience, so the mark of the beast will be the sign of obedience to the beast. Number 1. The sea beast's demand for worship, Revelation 13 verse 15, is a direct attack on the first commandment, you shall not have other gods besides me. The earth beast raises up an image of the beast to be worshipped, Revelation 13, 14 to 15, which is a direct attack on the second commandment, you shall not make for yourself an image, you shall not worship them or serve them. The beast is blasphemy of God. Revelation 13, 5 to 6 is a direct attack on the third commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. The mark of the beast, verse 16 to 17, is a direct attack on the fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Revelation 14, 6 to 12, the three angels' message clearly indicates that the Sabbath commandment in particular will be the litmus test of one's faithfulness and obedience to God. The appeal of the three angels' messages to worship and obey the true God rather than to worship the beast and receive the mark of the beast is clearly done in the context of the Sabbath commandment. The mark of the beast thus substitutes human commandments for God's commandments. The most obvious evidence of this is substituting the human established false Sabbath, namely Sunday, the first day of the week, for the seventh day. Yet observance of Sunday does not mean having the mark of the beast. Sunday keeping will become the mark of the beast only when people have a clear understanding of the issues involved in choosing a day of worship. That time still lies ahead in the future. In the present, Christ's followers must not label any individual or group as having the mark of the beast. Sunday keeping today does not make any person lost for the gospel. Just as Sabbath keeping does not make any person a genuine Christian. The time is coming, however, when the mark of the beast will become the issue. At that time, every person in the world will have to take his or her stand for or against God. Revelation does not explain what the mark of the beast will be like and how exactly it will be applied. Remember that as in the case of any unfulfilled prophecy, the mark of the beast will be understood at the time of its fulfillment. Whether you have taken the jab or not, it does not make you any less or more of a follower of Jesus. The jab is not connected in itself to the mark of the beast. Let us not spread fake news and conspiracy, but rather spread faith news about the second coming of Jesus. What we need to do daily is surrender our hearts to Jesus and we must be willing to obey His commandments. Kindly type in the comment section, Jesus is my refuge and strength. Thank you friend for supporting this ministry and for watching this video. Kindly share and be empowered by the word and may we all continue to seek truth in Bible prophecy.